Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity, having a career in technology, as well as work vlogs. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about a pretty popular topic in cybersecurity, and that is red team versus blue team. So if you're at all familiar with pen testing or penetration testing, then you likely have heard about red team versus blue team. And it's really just another way to phrase the offensive security team and the defensive security team. So depending on what company that you work for, if it's smaller or bigger, there may be either just one red team that handles all the offensive security things for your company, or you could have multiple penetration testing or offensive security teams, and the red team is just one of them. The blue team is known generally as the defenders, so essentially they're the ones that figuratively man the wall to protect your company from outside attackers, and maybe sometimes internal attackers. So let's take for example an application that your company is trying to defend. So your company's red team, or maybe even an externally hired red team, will be tasked with trying any way to break into this application, take advantage of it somehow, either stealing some kind of data, impersonating a user, exfiltrating logs, viewing some kind of sensitive information, escalating to admin privileges, things like that. So a red teamer could take advantage of the OWASP top 10, which I have a video linked below if you guys wanna check out more about that, and are essentially the most common vulnerabilities found in web applications. But for a red teamer, those are just some of the tools or some of the vulnerabilities that you're looking for. And you really have unlimited control of what tools you wanna to use to hack into an application application as long as you're able to use it within your company's perimeter. So you're essentially playing the role of a malicious user or a bad person who is external from the company trying to get access to this application and seeing how you can take advantage of it. And then based on that campaign, which can take anywhere from a week to a month to even longer, it really depends on how big the application or the system infrastructure that you are testing or that a red teamer is trying to break into. Based on what I've heard from my different mentors, a lot of it is based on the size of whatever they're trying to have break into. And the maximum is probably about a month. So after the red team tries to break into this application, it'll write up a pretty detailed set of notes and provide that as feedback to the application team. And that usually has all the vulnerabilities that they found, ways that they hacked into it, um, ways that they take advantage of the application and, and also ways to help prevent future break-ins from actual malicious actors. And a lot of red team feedback is usually implemented by the development team to make your company more secure, of course. And that can honestly be the sole source of security feedback that an application team gets. So it's really, really valuable information to know what kinds of attackers, what kinds of vulnerabilities that your application is not secure to. So that's what makes red team so, so valuable, especially for smaller companies that may not have a big cybersecurity team or mature processes in place that prevent bad things to go into production. So looking at the other side of things, the blue team, which are essentially, like I mentioned earlier, the defenders. So on the blue team, you're usually looking out for any kind of anomaly. So if you're on the blue team, you're likely going to be spending a lot of your time monitoring applications, monitoring systems, infrastructure, whatever your company is trying to keep protected from external threats and malicious actors. Your job is to ensure the security of whatever technology that you're protecting, identifying any security issues, and ensuring that the security that you do have in place in your company is actually effective against whatever threats that you're trying to defend against. So this could be considered pretty similar to an SOC analyst or a cybersecurity analyst role, but usually blue team is a lot more experienced in terms of being able to detect vulnerabilities, looking for very small anomalies in data, in certain logs of applications or network traffic. Something else that is different from Blue Team versus a normal SOC analyst or a cybersecurity analyst is that in Blue Team, you really need to have a very wide breadth and depth knowledge of your company's infrastructure. So you need to understand what technologies are being used at your company and it doesn't just pertain to one team or one specific area. And all of your background knowledge in this is, is also going to create the overall strategy for your company's overall security posture. So essentially, manning the walls and and strengthening the walls so this could be anything from gathering data about whatever it is that you're protecting documenting all the processes all the stakeholders people applications any other dependencies creating risk assessments implementing security policies like stronger passwords or two-factor authentication and they're likely going to be using a lot of monitoring tools so like I mentioned earlier so checking logs maybe checking for suspicious user activity and some other fun things that a blue team could do is to set up honeypots and they're essentially fake networks that you can basically set up to lure or attackers into thinking that they have actually gotten into your system and learning more about their behavior, what they're trying to do, what information they're trying to find, what they're targeting, what tools they're using, what commands they're using. So there's a lot of different things like that that Blue Team could do. And then essentially they'll just analyze that honeypot campaign and give that data back to the business to then go forward and make cybersecurity strategy decisions. So there's a lot that goes into Blue Team. And honestly, what I've heard from multiple sources, from multiple mentors that I've talked to in cybersecurity is that Blue Team is a lot harder than Red Team because for Red Team, you only need one way in. So you can basically throw everything you can at a problem and 
eventually most likely something is going to something is going to work i mean usually campaigns are limited to some kind of time constraint but if there wasn't a time constraint there's probably a 90 percent chance that you can break into a system but on the blue team as a defender you're basically trying to plug in plug up all the holes as many holes as possible and when you have an expansive portfolio of applications infrastructure different components in your network it's likely going to be very hard for you to be able to to be able to fix every little thing you're probably not going to be doing the rounds on every single application that you have every single day it's just impossible unless you have thousands of people on your cybersecurity team and most companies don't so you're likely going to be focusing on the big issues the big vulnerabilities and any zero days that you might find which is why blue team it feels like a never-ending cycle because you're always trying to fix something you're always trying to prevent something so it's really a never-ending list as a blue teamer now in terms of how technical each role is both roles are pretty technical depending on the tools that you're using and it really also depends what you're interested in because on either blue team or red team you may be scripting on red team you may be a bit more technical towards the coding side because you may be writing more scripts especially personalized for whatever that you're trying to break into comparing to using something out of the box that is already created on metasploit and you're probably going to be using all the popular tools like like mmap burp suite wireshark you'll likely need a good grasp on basic to advanced Linux commands. All the best hackers I know live on their Linux terminal. So that's definitely a really good skill to have if that's something that you guys are looking to learn. While I don't personally use a Linux machine, a lot of my coworkers do, and a lot of companies may offer Linux boxes specifically for pen testing purposes. So I would definitely look into that if you guys are interested. And you can also set up your own box on Kali Linux which is free and all the tools come with it. So I definitely, so I definitely look into that if you guys are interested in getting started. All right, this lighting is getting really dark because it is kind of getting late here, but, but for blue team, you'll likely be using different tools and a lot of them are going to be monitoring tools. So essentially honeypots, SIEMs, threat detection or network security monitoring tools, endpoint detection and response tools, incident response. There's also tools out there that emulate an actual adversary. So that could be a training or it could be a campaign that the blue team doesn't know about, depending on what kind of campaign that the red team or your cybersecurity team is running to try to improve the security of your company and, and understand the capabilities of your blue team. And there's various tools out there, so these are just high level what kinds of tools. But really, depending on your company, you could be using open source tools or you could be using private licenses. So I would say at the end of the day, both teams are pretty technical. Obviously, you have to have pretty good experience to be a good red teamer or a good blue teamer. So you definitely have to have a wide breadth of experience as well as deep knowledge of how red team and blue team tools work. And a lot of it has to do with psychology. So human behavior, what people are trying to do, what people are trying to get out of your application, what they're going to try to do next after they hack into something. Thing. So that's actually a reason why a lot of people in cybersecurity also have a psychology background or some kind of background working with, with people and basically human behavior. And there's also a lot of cross space between psychology and cybersecurity because, because really cybersecurity is defending people from other people that might be bad, you know? Like every piece of malware that's ever been written was written by a person or written by a program that a person wrote. So you're really protecting people from other people. And and that's why human behavior really comes into handy in a space like cybersecurity. Okay, I turned on the lights because it was getting a little dark, but but excuse the very warm tones. So last part of this video is about red team and blue team salary and, and job prospects along with job requirements. So based on ZipRecruiter, a red team makes on average $112,000 per year. And this is a pretty wide range, so I'll definitely keep that in mind based on your cost of living and what city that you're living in. But the 75 percentile is at about $153,000 per year and the 25th percentile is about $50,000 per year. So definitely a pretty big range. And I would definitely take into consideration the years of experience, your technical experience, your education, your certifications, your personal projects. Definitely don't undersell yourself based on these numbers that you find online, of course. These are really just guiding numbers and you could be making more or less than this number. So for Blue Team, the average salary is about $67,000 to $146,000 on Glassdoor. And because Blue Team is sometimes intermingled with the SOC analyst roles or these cybersecurity analyst roles out there, it's a bit harder to find the exact the exact average salary of a Blue Teamer. So I'll definitely do some research on all those roles and negotiate your salary based on those numbers. So in terms of years of experience, I really don't think that specific numbers really make that much of a difference because I know people who are fresh out of college, maybe now have one year of experience and are some of the best hackers that I know and are really, really good hackers. So, you know, it really just depends on how much experience and how much depth you have. So maybe if you see a job listing that says five years of experience required or 10 years of experience required, I would definitely still apply. You know, it doesn't hurt to throw in your resume in there. If you believe that you have the skills and what it takes to do that job, then there's nothing wrong with that. 
I also think that a lot of the skills and tools that you're going to use are learned on the job. So you never know if you're going to do something well until you actually try it, you know? So if you're a cybersecurity analyst or a cybersecurity engineer, or maybe you're just starting in cybersecurity and have a help desk role or an IT role, and you're trying to break into a red team or blue team role, I would definitely get that experience hands-on by yourself on the side first, whether it's personal projects, whether it's doing try hack me, hack the box, different CTFs which by the way is also how I got my experience in joining a pen testing team. And I can link a video on how I learned how to hack below if you guys are interested in checking that out. So yeah, I would say a lot of job listings are probably looking for five to 10 years of experience for an experienced red teamer or blue teamer. But again, don't be afraid to apply even if it says that. I mean, I personally only have about two and a half years of experience, but I will say that because I was in a rotation program, that was a big reason why I did have a chance to get into a pen testing role so early in my career. But it's really about knowing the skills, knowing the tools. If they're on your resume and you've already done projects with them, then you're probably already in the 50th percentile of candidates who are applying for that job. So I would really say get that free experience first and then try applying to whatever roles that you want to do. And don't take the number of years listed on a job listing too seriously because sometimes they really ask for ridiculous things and honestly, a lot of times it's not realistic. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. I am sorry for all of the lighting changes because I started recording around like 4.30 and nowadays the sun is setting around four o'clock and it's just really dark outside right now. But then if I turn the lights on, it gets really, it gets really warm toned and I don't really like that on this view. So but yeah, hopefully this is kind of a balance with the hallway light on. I don't know, let me know. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And if there's any video suggestions that you might want to see from me, please drop them in the comments below and I'll definitely add them to my backlog. And I think I mentioned it in my previous video, but I do want to add another note here that, that I will be going back to the office in the near future. So some things on my channel are gonna change a little bit just in terms of less work vlogs and more informational content like this because since I'll be going back to the office, I probably don't plan on filming in the office just, just because of company policy and confidentiality. So, so yeah, that's definitely something that you'll see as a change on my channel. And I do do work vlogs, like, and if I do post a work vlog, then it'll probably be kind of like a week in my life and I'll take you around and, and it'll be a lot more high level than sitting down and showing you my one day of work. So yeah, um, thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.